everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create and we're working on page six. Let me verify that. I'm pretty sure. There it is, page six. Page six of Couture. And look what I did. <laughs> I'm so pleased with myself. I think this turned out really well. And I'll show you what I did in a little bit. So we are going to install a flap and it's gonna to go toward the spine. And in this case, that means it's gonna be installed on the right hand side. Let me give you some details. This is seven and a half. You're gonna start with uh, seven and a half inches across and it's gonna be eight inches tall. And then you're going to fold in your score line and you're gonna put mark at four and then you're gonna come down to your corner. So make sure you're folding in your gusset, mark it at four and come down and that's gonna be the slope you have for page six. There we go. All right, so I've picked out my papers. I've got, um, this is gonna go on the top. I really like this pattern. I featured it in like a frame on another page, but I didn't use it as sort of the, the main piece. And this is gonna go here. And then this piece, this orange, which I love, is gonna go right there. And I haven't picked that out yet. But I want to show you that page seven is going to have um, a similar look and feel, but this panel is going to be a different size. But what I did essentially was cut it apart this way. So the piece that comes off of trimming this one is going to get used on page seven. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So again, once you trim this angle down, you're gonna take the, res the second piece and, and we're gonna put it over here. And we're gonna have them both go against the spine. Okay, I'm gonna move page seven out and we're gonna finish up on page six. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this panel down. I'm gonna dry fit it real quick, make sure we're all good. And it looks good. <clears throat> So I went to a retreat over the weekend and that is so invigorating. It really gets your creative juices flowing again to be around a whole bunch of people um, creating real time. Um, so that was a, a lot of fun. I taught a class at the retreat that was uh, hosted by Scrap and Escapes. Um, and uh, they're here in California and we were actually in San Diego. And I had a wonderful time. And um, I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. They do a really good job. It's it's run. It's very smooth and professional, and it's a great it's a great hotel. Um, so I was I was really happy with my experience. That's the second time I've done that with them, and uh, you know I just I feel like I can't say enough good things about those two gals. So I had a lovely time. I'm I'm definitely gonna go to another retreat. I also got the privilege of teaching there. Um, so I did a little class and I've already got a video out for you guys if you wanted to see it. It is the um, travel journal with the Let It Be collection. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I was blabbing and I almost uh, didn't plan for my magnet. I'm just gonna ink this and set it aside. Then we're gonna figure a few things out before I cover up my magnet space. Okay. Anyways, it was real fun. Oh, and it turned out one of the ladies I was sitting across from, her name was Wendy. She is, um, she was working on a mini album by Frances Long, so I want to give Frances a shout out too. Um, haven't, haven't talked to her in a long time, but she's a great mini album maker and teacher. Okay, so now these frames, these wonderful frames. Basically, um, I had a scrap and it happened to have this sort of angle on it. And I laid it on top of my hollowed out frame, which is basically a one inch border. So this is five by seven with a one inch. Um, so I basically cut out a four by six center. So I laid it across and then hollowed it out. And then I came up with the second piece of paper and trimmed it actually to fit. And because I did that, I wound up with the second set. So you can see if I put these two orange pieces together, it would have made one. So I think that turned out pretty well. Um, 
I actually did it what I think is the hardest way, but if you cut, um, if you put two pieces of paper back to back and then you cut an angle, um, that sort of becomes your primary. And what I would have done in retrospect is I would have taken it full without the hollow part and trimmed everything down to size, got a mate, trimmed everything down to side size, tape them together like I have here and then hollow out the center. And I actually did four pieces independently instead. So at any rate, um, basically, if I put my oranges together, I have a finished frame. And if I put my black together, I have a finished uh, solid uh, black, um, a black frame. So I'm going to use one on uh, page six and one on page seven is the current plan. Now, right now, it's just a hollowed out frame. And what I'm going to do is put a piece on the back so that this can actually act as a pocket. So let's go ahead and get that started first. So we're going to need um, uh, six by seven and a half, six by seven and a half. Let's see if I've got, yep, six by seven and a half. Okay, and in order to make uh, the back for the pocket, we're gonna score three of the four sides. so I don't have too much bulk. A little bit hanging off so I'm just going to trim that. There we go. Okay. So now this is what normally would just lay flat on um, our book, um, but I'm going to lay it right on top of this frame, and that's what's going to turn this frame into a pocket, pocket frame. There we go. So there is our pocket frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down this frame. Everything looks good and I think I've inked it also. Now this is, um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna color block here or not. Um, this is temporary tape, by the way. 
which comes in handy when I need one more hand. So when I say color block, um, I'm questioning whether or not I'm gonna leave a slight black seam. And I think I am because I think it really makes it pop. Um, it's just one of those things, and that's also why I bag everything with cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down one of the one of the two pieces, get it positioned, and then I will trim this edge and this edge to create that little bit of gap. Um, so you really only need to pick one or the other. And I'm gonna hand mark and trim based on that. So I'll probably just wind up backing off a little bit. To have about a 16th inch gap. And actually it's gonna go this way. I decided I wanted the solid diamond up. So let's give this a shot. Get it in, everything looks good. Excess glue. Clean that up. Okay. Now, I do want that slight gap, so I'm just going to take a sliver off either side. Right, first, I have to get that white off. And I'm actually going to mark it and trim it. So the other thing you could do is create that gap visually, and then you could take one strip off this side, which in retrospect, that's what I'm gonna do. I think it's gonna be easier to trim one straight line. I can't use that, it's too short. Sorry, you're gonna get a lot on the top of my head because it's hard for me to see those pencil marks. Okay, that looks right. Make sure it didn't shift. Beautiful. So now I'm ready. I'm going to ink it, lay it down. Okay, what do you guys think? It's pretty cool, huh? I'm really liking it. Such a simple idea, but I think it there's a huge wow factor here. Okay, so that's one down. So let's pull this back in. And part of the reason I wanted to finish that before laying these pieces in is I want to figure out what the position's gonna be. So I definitely want the orange on the black side and the black on the tan side. Um, that would be the all. The, uh, the alternative, and I think the orange just stands out better on this side. And it's creating, if you don't see it yet, you will now, it's creating yet another uh, triangle or V. So with this line and this line. So, okay, so here we are, and the reason I need to figure out where I'm positioning this is it's going to house a magnet. So I think, yeah. So I'm gonna center it up and down on this panel and I'm gonna push it over to the left until it comes right to the edge of this flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that. I'm gonna put this behind it so you can see what I'm saying. So there's the edge of the flap. I'm gonna center it up and down and then I'm gonna push it over to uh, the left until this tip, this corner is flush with 
or there's this intersection right here, okay? So that looks about right. So I'm gonna hold this in place, draw my lines, and then I'll know where to put my glue. And then we can um, put a magnet on the back of this frame and on the body of the body of this. So I now know that I do not need to get a magnet behind this, so let's go ahead and glue it down. I just had a panic attack that I hadn't hit the record button. You know what? I went back and looked at all my projects and I counted them. I was curious. We, I have a hundred, this is 114, 114 projects available for you guys online with tutorials for free. So if you haven't already shared your knowledge of this channel with somebody else that likes to scrap, please do. There's lots of stuff for you guys to work on. And if you're not a Graphic 45 fan, I get it. Not everybody is. The first part of all my um, videos is just the interactive components with a black cardstock. You can put whatever you want on top of that, right? It doesn't have to be the same papers I choose, right? So there should be something for everyone out there. pretty good. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it. Okay, now we're ready for magnets. I think I'm going to put it in the middle. Get my nice thick tape that goes all the way over the magnet to soften the edges. There we go. I had to change out my mat again. You guys probably don't recognize this blue one. The Martha Stewart one, I like the idea that it folds for taking it somewhere, but um, within just a matter of a couple of days, I had already started to wear off the left-hand corner grid. So, and I use my grid, I reference it. So I, uh, I'm gonna think of it more as a craft mat and not something I can measure on. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that, okay. I like the way that turned out. I still need to locate some uh, paper to trim this out and trim this out. I'm going to take a quick break, go find something that looks great, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got it all figured out. So I chose this from the 12 by 12. By the way, I didn't mention it. Everything's from the 12 by 12 here. And did I ink it? Yes, I did. Fit. Yep, it still closes. OK, 
Okay, and then I trimmed this out and you can tell it's from the 12 by 12. It's gonna go right here. There's our magnet. So we are uh, almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and make an insert for the frame on the front, just to add a little color. But of course that's where you could put a photo or a journaling card or both. So I'm probably just uh, in, for the sake of time, going to use a journal card and just slip it in there and just make sure it's kind of coordinates. Okay. Yay! So let's find a journaling card. It's my bag of goodies. Everything's still bagged up from going to the retreat this weekend. There we go. You know what? I think I'm going to put another photo frame here. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm going to wait because I, I want to make sure I don't run out of paper. But this would be a great place for a photo frame or a photo period. It doesn't, you don't have to frame it. And as you can see, it's a, it's a relatively uh, large space. This is seven and a half inches by four and three quarters. So it's pretty large. Um, you can get a couple of different things. One of the, I, I like doing the photo mats because it then people can see, visualize where to put photos. But if you put the photo mats in, that limits you to the size that you've put in, or I think it looks better if you do that. If you don't have a photo mat here, you could do two four by fours and slightly overlap them. So um, it can cause you to go a certain way with the album rather than, you know, putting down the photos that, you know, you have and then adding black mats, right? So you could easily get, uh, these are two and, two and a half by three. Yeah, two and a half by three and a half. So you could you could do more of a collage-like effect, but if you've already got like a big black mat there, it's kind of hard to get past it. Okay, well, I am gonna call it done for page um, six, and we're gonna work on page seven. And it's essentially, the measurements are different, but all the designer papers are the same that I've selected. So I will be back as soon as I do a little bit of housekeeping and get my flaps and everything lined up for page seven. I hope you guys enjoyed. Back soon.